Folks, we have discussed with you the limit for Dorado. Again, want to remind you that if at all possible, you release these fish. Don't take more than three. Of course, that is the limit. Look at the action here. Look at that stuff come to the corner, just like we told you it would if you threw that chub. Great way to get this stuff going. But please remember, release some of these gorgeous fish so that your kids and my kids and their kids someday we'll be able to have as much fun on this as we all have and man it is a ball <laughs> look at these talk on dorado they're all over the place bob alvarez giving you again a peak at exactly what we're talking about when we're talking about fishing the squid not a huge piece just a little piece fly line in the bait back there bob's twitching the spool keeping that bait moving that entices those fish into biting it he continues to twitch away at that look at that little finesse move there by bob and then when he gets bit, of course, you're going to feel that line start to rip. You're going to put it in gear, and then you're going to swing on him. And then you're on to a Dorado, and the acrobatic show begins. Take a look back there. Wow, look at that fish jump. I mean, it is exciting, outstanding action. You're going to love it, folks. Folks, I'll tell you, Bob's got another nice Dorado. He's been winding on for quite some time on the lighter monofilament. And Rick does also. We're going to give you an idea of what we're talking about when we're talking about the catch and release program. Please do not put those Dorado in the Ponga or on your skiff. They're going to whack around in there and they're going to kill themselves. You don't want to do that. You want to leave them in the water and we'll take a look at Bob and see exactly how he does it. He's got his pliers, his dikes ready there. He's going to get down as close as he can and try to remove that hook. Now, if you can't get the hook, you can always just chop the mono off and let them go. They have an acid, all fish do, in their mouths that dissolve those hooks after a short amount of time. Bob's going to get down there treating this thing nice and gently and he's going to try to remove that hook. And look at that. Look at that fish swim away alive to fight another day and that is just beautiful that's what we like to see you folks do and look at the size of this big dorado nice big fish it's circling around bob alvarez is over to do the very same to release this beautiful gorgeous fish and that's what it's all about when you got some fish on board and you got plenty to eat doggone it release them it's a great feeling you're going to love it All right, another tip for you private boaters is slow trolling. You cover a little bit more area that way, and at the same time, you've got a bait back there just in case any of the Dorado are around. Now, what do you slow troll with? Well, we showed you the Mako L Jacks. That's a good idea. Albacore style feathers allow you to move at a more rapid pace and cover more area. But boy, I'll tell you, Bob Alvarez, what he likes to troll with is the slab bait. Put a slab of skipjack back there, put that slab of squid back there, and just slow troll. Just kick the boat into gear and move around, looking for areas that may be conducive for these Dorado to inhabit. Looking for kelps, of course, all the time, or any debris in the water, a great way to get the job done. And zigzagging, you want to zigzag, that's a good way to do it also. Now, as you're trolling along, folks, and you're looking for these jig strikes, of course, you're going to look for the kelps, the debris. What else? Bird life. If there's anything you look for, more often it is bird life. If you see high-flying birds looking down, that's an indication that the fish are deeper. If you see the stuff picking down at the water, actually, the birds are flying down and picking. Probably the Dorado or whatever species of fish is there has got the bait up and it's pushing it up. The birds are coming in to pick at it. But watch the birds. Very, very important. Look for areas with lots of bait. You find a meatball of bait, you want to circle through that. You want to drag the Mako L Jacks through that. Or you want to soak a slab bait right in the middle of that. And, of course, you always have to keep in mind good conditions. Warm water, blue water, 
Those kinds of areas are what are going to produce consistently for you. And if you look for those kind of signs down in Mexico, you're going to be successful as a private boater. You're really going to find these areas. And don't be afraid to venture out a little bit and troll around some areas where the fleet is not working. Work away from the fleet on some given points in time. That is really going to do it for you. Here he is, Bob Alvarez, with a longer kind of bait stick here. Again, with a lighter line and having an absolute ball. Gosh, doggone, I don't know how many fish these guys have caught, but I do know they're having the time of a life on these fish. Boy, and you can tell it must be blistery cold out there, Bob, with his shirt off. Oh, come on, it's a beautiful, gorgeous day as it normally is down there in Laredo. Quite a trick here as Bob is not only trying to catch the fish, but he's trying to gaff it. And he pulled it off. Take a look at this. Not exactly where you want to gaff a fish, but what the heck when a guy's trying to reel on it and catch it and gaff it at the same time, our hats have got to be tipped to Bob Alvarez. He's going to give you a look at another gorgeous, beautiful Dorado. How can you beat the size of that fish? It is really outstanding action, and these guys are capitalizing on it. And folks, I hope Stacy Robbins is an inspiration to all of you ladies out there watching. Stacy just loves to fish. She's like my wife, Carrie. Both of them love to get together and wet a line. And I'll tell you, there's nothing like it. The ladies do a magnificent job. Well, I hate to admit it, my wife normally outfishes me. And I know Stacy outfishes Bob on a regular basis. Well, there's just nothing like it. And Stacy really has turned into an outstanding rod and reel person. She knows how to pull on these fish and how to really do it right. Well, folks, we are going to cut off now from Laredo. We're going to change venues. We're going to Bahia de Los Angeles to the Bay of L.A. with you, where you're going to see some more exciting Dorado action. Well, I tell you, I just want to give you my personal endorsement of Laredo, as well as that of Bob Alvarez. I know how he feels about the area. Gorgeous area, a lot of fish, and great atmosphere. I mean, just a family kind of place. Laredo, that sense of a small Mexican town, it is there, and you are going to love it. Wonderful fishing down there. I hope we give you some of the right tackle tips. Look at that gorgeous Dorado. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that Laredo action. We're on Mexico One now, heading down about 300 miles south of the border. That's all. And you see the road to the Bay of L.A. We take that out there, about a 40-mile drive. And boy, I tell you, flat, calm weather is what you're going to see in the Bay of L.A. Certainly, every once in a while, you'll get a little bit of wind. And as a private boater, I'm going to admonish you right now. If you do get some of that wind, get on back. Don't wait for it to blow up real hard. Get on in there. But in most cases, what you're going to find is absolutely flat, calm, gorgeous weather in the Bay of L.A. Boy, oh boy, it is so conducive to some outstanding fishing. Well, Bob Alvarez put some albacore-style feathers out. No, not to catch Dorado. To catch Skipjack. Well, what the heck's he want with Skipjack, you're asking? Doggone it, it's the perfect bait. You slab that stuff out, and it is outstanding bait. Wonderful bait for the Dorado. You can slow troll it, or you can cut it up in those chunks, just like we did with the squid earlier. Boy, take a look at that Skippy. Nice fish. And that baby's ready to be slabbed out, and it's going to be the perfect bait for these Dorados. So an excellent way to get the job done, either trolling the feathers or the iron. Either way, you're going to come up with some of these Skippies. Look at how tight to the island these guys are. I mean, they're right in there. It is flat calm, and Stacy Robbins is now on to another Dorado. Slow trolling that skipjack. That's what Bob did. He dropped it back there, just slow trolled it, and bam! This big Dorado jumped right on it. Look at the size of this thing. Now, question in your mind, perhaps. Do you leave that reel and free spool when you're trolling? Well, you can. You can give them a little bit. What I like to recommend is hold that rod tip up pretty high, and when you get bit, just give them the rod tip. Drop your rod tip all the way down, almost to the water, and when it all tightens up, swing on them. You're going to have them. Look at that beautiful fish for Stacy. And she did a magnificent job on another big, beautiful Bay of L.A. Dorado. Here's another first-timer for you, Rick Crucier. Rick's onto a nice big Dorado himself. You can see that beautiful fish kind of rear and go off and come back and 
go underneath the boat. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Rick's got this fish now up and out. This fish has seen the skiff, and it's run outside. Just take your time. Don't button down on the drag. Don't pull too hard. Just stay with these babies, and you're going to get them. They are acrobatic, and they're a hard-fighting fish, and perhaps one of the best tips I can give you is to continue following them. Keep them in front of you, and they're going to move like you can't believe. They're going to be here. They're going to be there. They're going to move like you can't believe. Look at that thing. The key is to keeping them right in front of you, and you're going to get them on board. And they are just a wonderful fish to watch. Gosh darn, you know, it is just something that makes you think how blessed we are fishing these waters. Just a wonderful fish to catch, the Dorado. Take a look at this beauty. Now, folks, they're fishing late summer, and you can see how tight to the island they were. Water temperatures warm up to the point where the kelp disappears entirely, and those dorada move in looking for some structure so they get in tight to the islands. Another good tip for you guys who are private boaters. Ed Alvarez, Bob's father. Boy, I'll tell you, Ed has been instilling in us a real interest in Mexico since we were kids. He's taught us that Mexico was not only a fun place to go, but a place where you could go and learn a lot. And we've taken Ed up on this. Well, in this case, Ed's taken us up. He's on board with us, and Ed is a light tackle enthusiast. Take a look at that rod. Take a look at the job that the fish is doing to Ed or Ed's doing to the fish. I'm not quite sure what it is, but boy, I mean, this thing is pulling. And on the 10-pound mono, you've got your hands full. It's a real battle. It's a real ball. But that's the way Ed Alvarez likes to fish these things, and it's a great idea for you folks. You want to get out there with your little spinning gear? Take it, make a nice long cast, and bam, you're going to have your hands full for a while. Let's watch Ed battle this thing. Is he going to get it? I don't know. Ese lunar que tienes, cielito lindo, junto a tu boca. No se lo ves a nadie. You can see Ed's got this fish straight up and down now. See one of the Mako L Jacks right in front of you. Those are one of the lures that are so effective when you're trolling around looking for the doors, and they'll bite it very, very well. Excellent fish here for Ed. Now, folks, again, you can drive down to Laredo. There is daily air service with Aero California as Ed gives you a look at a fish he caught on 10 pound mono. What a great job he did. That daily air service is certainly very convenient. About an hour and a half from LA, and you're down in beautiful, sunny Baja, California. It can really be outstanding down to Laredo. And of course, the Bay of LA, they have some air service also out of Ensenada down there. You can fly down there on a Cessna or you can drive down. Not a very long drive at all. Well, Stacy Robbins back onto a Dorado. Take a look at this. She just will not slow down. I tell you, she doesn't want to rest. She doesn't want to quit. She just wants to catch more Dorado and release them and catch another one. Look at this fish jump. Really great action. And man, oh man, what I'd give to be down there right now pulling on one of these babies. It is so beautiful. And something else to remind you about, folks, in the Bay of L.A. or in Laredo, you can go out and fish this stuff till noontime when the sun becomes sometimes unbearable. Head on in, have a little lunch, take a siesta, and then you're ready for the evening bite where you can walk down the beach and surf fish for some stuff. Really a ball and really outstanding action. Well, we have certainly enjoyed taking you south of the border to the Bay of L.A. and Laredo. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you can get down there very, very soon. We enjoyed bringing this hot Dorado action here on the 976 through the Saltwater Action Series. Fishing these Dorado is something that you'll never forget, and I hope you do very, very soon. Stacy Robbins saying goodbye. We hope we see you soon, everybody. Take great care of yourselves. Once again, everybody, we want to thank you so very much for joining us on this newest 976 in a saltwater action video, Tips on Taking Dorado. For Bob Alvarez, I'm Philip Friedman, thanking everybody involved in this video, and thanking the great, wonderful, warm people of Mexico for such a great time. We had a wonderful time, and I know you will, too. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time on the newest 976 in a saltwater action video.